There are nearly 200 million missing women in the world's population, according to the UN. These women are missing due to a high preference for male offspring in some strongly patriarchal societies and communities. In these societies, pregnancies are selectively terminated and children are killed or neglected for one reason, because they are girls. Think about it. 200 million. That is 10 times the population of Australia. Half of South America and nearly a third of Europe. It's bigger than any genocide that you've heard of. And it's a massive violation of women's rights, hence human rights. Now imagine a world where no child is considered less worthy because of their sex. A world where people of any sex or gender are valued for their humanity. Wouldn't that be an amazing place to live in? A world where men, women and people who identify as neither are all equal and respected. A world that is truly democratic. We are often told that we are there already and that gender equity exists, at least in the so-called first world. So what are feminists talking about? Well, we are talking about gender-biased practices that tell us every day that we have a long way to go. And gender selection is one of them. Now let's talk about high-tech gender selection practiced in the West. It looks like this. A woman undergoes fertilization in vitro and prenatal genetic diagnosis is used to determine the chromosomal sex of embryos. And then the embryos of the preferred sex are implanted in uterus. Now, high-tech gender selection is often seen as ethically permissible. It does not involve infanticide or selective terminations. It's practiced in a safe medical environment. And it's expensive. It costs around $30,000. So it's only available to a wealthy few. Some also argue that high-tech gender selection is a part of reproductive autonomy. It's often used for family balancing. So it's not based on prejudice against one particular gender. And some argue that parents have the right to choose what kind of child they will have, as much as they have a right to choose if they will have them in the first place. Now, I definitely believe that a woman has the right to decide if she wants to continue a pregnancy or not. However, when we are deciding if we want to have a child, isn't it different from when we are deciding or determining what kind of child we will have. I think that there is a difference. And I think that gender selection is harmful. And it's harmful to the child and to society. Now I say gender because parents select the sex of their children not because they want a child with particular genitals, but because they want a child who will perform a particular gender role, something like this. Maybe they want a little princess dressed in pink and a little soccer player. A big strong boy or a little cute girl. I have interviewed Australian parents who have selected or want to select their child's gender. In Australia, gender selection for non-medical reasons is currently prohibited. But parents can go abroad to countries such as the US, Thailand, or Greece and get gender selection there. Because of the prohibition, I had problems finding people who would talk to me, and it took months to find just anybody. In the end, I managed to talk to nine women only, so it's a starting point. However, this is the first qualitative study in the world that looks into parents' motives motives of parents who are undergoing uh, prenatal gender selection. And that's why it's important. 
All the women I've talked with desired girls, and they wanted them really badly. They all had a couple of sons, and they wanted daughters, so they were selecting for family balancing. Now you're asking, why do these women desire daughters so badly? They all believe that they cannot have a strong relationship with a son. They had strong relationships with their mothers, and they wanted to replicate the same relationship with their daughters when they grow up. Now I will give you three quotes by these women that explain their motivation in more detail. The first woman said that while her sons were still little, her perception was that they will grow up and fly the coop and make their own lives, while a daughter would stay closely aligned with her own family. So I feel that with my boys, I'm raising my children to have them leave me, and I feel that a girl would because you're the same sex, essentially, I would have the opportunity to have more in common with them. A second woman explained her desire to undergo high-tech uh, high gender selection in the following way. I've tried. I've had two children, and I don't want to have a soccer team to have a daughter. So she did not want to keep reproducing naturally and risk having more sons. And finally, a third woman said, I just didn't want to miss out on, you know, when she was 20 or 25, like that sort of age. And you know, when she was getting married and having babies and all that kind of stuff. All the women I talked to imagined that their daughters will grow up and identify as straight women. So you see a range of gender stereotypical assumptions being made here. First of all, there is an assumption that there are two types of children in the world, boys or girls. And while boys are independent, self-centered and individualistic, girls are family-oriented, emotional and homely. And of course, all girls will get married and have children, right? Now, what if the kids are nothing like this? What if they do not fulfill their parents' expectations? What will happen? Imagine that you're the boy. What if you don't like soccer? What if you prefer dancing? And what if you want to have close relationship with others? Will you not be harmed by the preconceived ideas about masculinity? Will you not be harmed by the assumption that you don't want to have a close relationship with your mom? And what about the girl? Imagine that you're her. Maybe you're not family type. Maybe you're adventurous and forever single. And what if you're a tomboy your whole life? And what if you join dykes on bikes? <laughs> and of course, this is all based on an assumption that you will actually have a boy or a girl. But we know that chromosomes pair in really complex ways. So you can select for one chromosome and they can combine differently. And you can have an intersex child. Or you can have a child who will not identify with your preferred gender, a transgender child. So what does this all tell us? There are parents with very strong gender preferences, and these preferences are potentially self-defeating. If gender selection is legal, and there is demand for this in Australia, it sends out a message that gender is a really crucial trait in a child, and it defines their relationship with parents. So are the parents who select bad people? Not necessarily. They are people who act on gender stereotypes. But these stereotypes are all around us. The beliefs that women are more family-oriented and men are self-centered are really common. You see them on every TV channel. Politicians all around the world reinforce them. But these stereotypes are harmful because they reinforce sexism. So I suggest 
that we leave them behind and let the children be free to become whoever they want to be. Thank you.